He's been helping out over at Kane's stable recently. The bartender says that Judd was giving Cora fits about something or other most of the night. So bad he had to throw him out just about the time you arrived. Yes, I remember now. He was so drunk he could hardly stand on his feet. Did you hear him threaten anyone? He said he was going to get a gun and come back. Well, that checks. Now, uh, by any chance, did you happen to see him later? Maybe when you left the saloon. Well, Major? Sheriff, this is most serious. I must tell it to you exactly as it happened. That's exactly the way I want it. Well, as I recall, there's a stairway outside the building across the alley from the saloon. That's right, go on. I have no idea where it leads. As I was leaving, I saw a man walking up those stairs. I remember because I wondered who else would be out that late. Was it Crowley? Sheriff, it was quite dark. Major, you had a good look at this man earlier. Was it Judd Crowley? It was. Thank you, sir. It's Tucson all over again. Everything's exactly the same. We're all right. They don't suspect me. And I give you my oath it won't happen again. <gasps> Your oath? Don't make me laugh, Major. Yes, I'm rid of that feeling. I'm cleansed. Look in my eyes. It's out of my system. Until you get your hands on a jug again. You are a blooming maniac. I'm not. That's not true. I was a hero during the war. I risk my life time and time again. Look at some of these medals. The war's over, Major. And that won't wash out what you've done to these innocent girls. <laughs> innocent. They were filth, and the world's a better place without them. Oh, really? And just what did they ever do to you? They exist. That's no answer, Major. Sergeant, I'm going to tell you a story. What a surprise. I'm going to tell you about my mother. I'm not interested in your mother. My mother ran the most popular boarding house in the city, and it wasn't because of the quality of the rooms. Do you have any idea what it's like for a little boy to find that out about his mother, to hear dirty jokes, to be pointed out with a wink and a smirk. Do you want to hear more? Ah, where are you yes, going? You take it easy. Anything happens to me, and they open a letter that puts a rope around your neck? <laughs> I don't think so. You've been living too well, too high on the hog, love, so to speak. I don't think you're going to give that up. And besides, you're an accomplice now. Me? You. You could have turned me in after Tucson. But you didn't. Because you were a rear private with a bad record and no future. You wanted to climb aboard a gravy train. Get a promotion. Be my orderly. Live my kind of life. Share my money. That's not how it happened. Oh, no? No! I, I, I didn't ask you for anything. You did all the offering. Anything I wanted, I could have just so long as I kept my mouth shut. You begged me. You told me that I'd be a fool to pass up such a chance. You tell that to a court and see where it gets you. Oh. <gasps> you really are a leprechaun, aren't you, Major? Hmm. All right. You win. But there's got to be no more killing. Oh, I told you there wouldn't be anyone else. Oh, it's over now. Over. I pray that it is, Major. Now, you just relax and enjoy your stay here. You may never have another opportunity to be at such a fine place. All right. But uh, doesn't the Major think that it's time for us to leave this place? The Major does not. The Major has plans. Audra Barclay, Sergeant. I 
I've never met anyone like her before. With her, I feel it would change everything. Are you serious, man? Yes, I am. She will be my salvation. She's pure. I feel I can fully and finally cleanse myself with her. Major, why don't you join us? Where are you going? Well, it's just the Cattlemen Association meeting, but we usually cut that short and sweet and get into the most cutthroat poker game you've ever seen. Thank you, but I think I'll just stay here and keep the ladies company, if you don't mind. Well, all right. Jared, don't keep a kicker. Never. Where's Nick? Where's Jared? There's Nick. <laughs> and you, Nick, what? don't draw to an inside straight. Oh, no, not me. I learned not to do that from you. You who beat me out of $5, remember? Well, that's very pretty playing, miss. Very pretty. That's because you have no ear for music. You are absolutely right. Major? Nick, will you come on? All right. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope you ladies don't mind. Not a bit. Well, now, Jared, you ready to lose the east wing of the Barkley Ranch? <laughs> You've heard my entire repertoire. Besides, it's time for coffee. Mrs. Barkley. Hmm? I'm going to marry your daughter. I beg your pardon? I said I'm going to marry your daughter. I hope this pleases you. Well, Major... Have you discussed this with Audra? Well, not yet. I didn't think it was proper. And you are quite correct. Major, well, we all admire you very much, and we are very grateful to you for what you have done, but... Am I to understand that you're rejecting me? Oh, no, no, no. In the final analysis, Audra's wishes are all that are important. But you barely know each other. Aren't you being a bit hasty? Hasty? Well, who knows how much life is left for you, for me, for anyone. Can't you see? What's the matter? <laughs> she is opposed to our marriage. Our marriage? Yes. I won't permit it. I respect your mother, Audra. But our future together is really all that matters. Major, I... I don't know what I could have done to cause this misunderstanding. I... I think you're a wonderful person, and I... I think you're very attractive, but... Then you will marry me, despite what anyone else says. I'm sorry, but I don't love you. In fact, I barely know you. It takes time. Time? There is no time. I thought you were different, but perhaps not. Perhaps there's another man. Lots of men. I thought you were pure, but... With your permission, ladies, I shall remove my unwelcome presence. I've never seen him act like that. Audra, he's a strange man. A very strange man.
It sure has been an interesting trip, me traveling along, listening to myself talk. Huh? You haven't said ten words since we left the ranch. Oh, I'm sorry, Nick. I was just, uh, just thinking about Audra and Elliot. Yeah, I've been doing some thinking about him, too. He's kind of sweet on Audra, isn't he? <laughs> I think he is. You know, if we don't watch our step, we may just wind up with a genuine hero in the family. Could be. How would that sit with you, Nick? I told you how I felt about it. What this Elliot? He's a kind of a little off-center, isn't he? What do you mean? You should have heard the lecture he gave me this morning. Lecture? What about? Oh, you boys did bring all your folding money, didn't you? <laughs> Come on, let's go. What, uh, what was the lecture about, Nick? Oh, same old stuff. Vice, corruption, how there's no such thing as a pure woman. You know, this man makes a preacher seem sinful. <laughs> he sure does carry on about purity, doesn't he? That he does. Well, after you, Counselor. I tell you what, you go ahead. I'll be with you in a minute. You're not thinking about doing something uh, sinful and unpure. Wouldn't dream of it. Yeah. 